Hi friends, welcome to our channel. In this session, we will discuss the concept of input buffering. Okay. So this concept comes under lexical analyzer. The lexical analyzer reads the source program character by character and then generate tokens. Now the important thing is we need a way to read the tokens. How the tokens are read by this lexical analyzer. For this purpose two pointers are implemented. One is lexin begin pointer. Second one is forward pointer. What is the use of this pointer? To read a token, Lexim Analyzer uses two types of pointers, begin pointer and forward pointer. Then what is the reason for reading a token? Simple things, actually our source program is stored in hard disk. Initially, our source program is stored in hard disk. Whenever the program is to be executed, compulsory the program is to be loaded into main memory. Loaded into main memory. How the reading operation is performed? We are reading character by character. We are reading character by character. That is for each reading. For example, if the program contains 10 characters, so 10 system calls are required. 10 system calls are required. Now I will show you how Consider an example int main of how this is the source program. This program is represented like this i t space main. After this, we have parenthesis. Like this, whatever it is. If this is the representation. The two pointers initially points to the first two character. FP is the forward pointer. Assume BP is the begin pointer. Initially the two pointer points to the first two character of the first two lexeme. The procedure is each and every time forward pointer moves ahead. Now this is forward pointer. Again moves ahead. This is forward pointer. Again moves ahead. This is forward pointer. That is, each and every step forward pointer moves ahead until the blank space occurred. Whenever forward pointer reaches a blank space in the sense, one leg seam is available. One leg seam is available. And then reinitialize the pointer. So, reinitialize this begin pointer and forward pointer to the Starting of the another lexeme. Simply ignore the spaces. Whenever a blank space occurs, one lexeme is completed. Now the begin pointer moves to the starting of the second lexeme. So the procedure is repeated until all the identifiers are reached. Until all the identifiers, that is all the lexemes are reached. Here what is the problem? Read character by character. I, N, T, so read character by character, it is complete many number of system calls. To overcome this problem, character by character, many number of system calls, we are using the concept of buffering. Input in the sense, we are providing the input. This is the source program. That input is to be loaded into the buffering. That is what the buffering do. Instead of reading character by character, at a time we are reading a block of characters by using single system call. Instead of for example here it requires 10 system calls that is 10 characters. Instead of 10 system calls by using only one call I am reading that complete block of characters. Now this buffering is two types. One buffering system, two buffering. Either one buffering, two buffering. So now I will explain. How do you implement the concept of one buffering and two buffering? Remember the procedure is same. What is the procedure? You have to read the source program from hard disk to input memory. So one buffering in the sense, the name specifies 
only single buffer is used to store the value. Suppose this is the single buffer i n t space suppose a b so some simple declaration I am declaring two variables a comma b into a b semicolon single buffer the logic is completely the same this is the forward pointer this is the begin pointer this entire input is read at a time instead of single this entire thing is read at a time what is the problem assume int a comma b suppose some c is equal to a plus b as you if this is your program if this is your program but buffer can store only this this thing is not stored why so the main problem of one input buffering is if the capacity of the buffer is less than size of the program Suppose if the program size is total 200 characters, but a buffer can store a maximum of 100 characters. The size of the buffer is assume 100, but the program size is 200. It is not possible to store all the 200 characters into 100. Then what you do? After completion of all these 100, again you have to perform overridden operation. Each and every time you have to perform overriding operation. That is the problem of one input buffering. That is one buffering scheme. To overcome this overridden concept, just they are implementing two in buffer. That is two buffer scheme in the sense simply you can understand. Instead of maintaining single buffer, in this situation here they are maintaining two buffers. Suppose C is equal to A plus B like this, whatever it is. Okay, this is the first buffer, this is second buffer. Remember, how do you identify the end of a buffer? If you have two buffers, when we know the first buffer is completed, when we know the second buffer is completed, for that reason, at the end of each buffer, we are maintaining a special character EOF. EOF in the sense end of file or another name is sentinel character. Buffer is ended with whenever EOF reached means that is end of the particular buffer. EOF is end of the particular buffer. It is a special character or sentinel character. Here also the procedure is very simple. First beginning pointer and forward pointer is at the starting of the first lexi. Step by step forward pointer moves until a lexi available. Suppose whenever the forward pointer reaches end of the file, then this is the important thing. Whenever the forward pointer reaches the end of the first buffer, then, then both begin pointer and forward pointer points to the starting of the second buffer. You got it? After completion of the first buffer, control automatically moves to second buffer. That means compared to one buffer, in two buffers we can store large amount of information. Now after completion of this, suppose whenever this one, after completion of this one, again we are refilling the first buffer. Refilling in the sense, suppose here some additional program is there that is filled with the first buffer and then second buffer and so on. Simple thing, instead of maintaining one, if you are maintaining two, program complexity is reduced. That is, it can reduce the traversing, that reduce the number of system calls like this. This is a two buffer scheme. Now this entire thing is represented in some algorithm format that is also very simple. Simply switch off. Always we require forward pointer. Suppose if it is a pointer. We have different cases. The first case is EOF. That is end of file. End of file. Suppose in buffer 1. If buffer 1. If a forward pointer simply, if a forward is at the end of EOF, that means if the forward pointer points to end of the file, then automatically forward is equal to, forward points to the starting of second buffer, right? 
If the forward pointer is end of the first buffer, then we are updating forward as the starting of the second buffer. Else, if forward is at the end of second buffer, forward is at the end of second buffer, then forward is equal to starting of first buffer, and we are performing refilling operation. We are performing refilling operation. Else. Simply break. That is, we start the process. That is, if it is end of the first buffer, then we are moving into second buffer. If it is end of the second buffer, again we are moving into first buffer after refilling the code. This is the case for EOF, and we can write the cases for different characters. Different characters in the sense, if it is a character M, move the forward pointer. Character A, move the forward pointer. Character I, move the forward pointer. Character L. Move the forward pointer. Whenever space occurred, simply update the begin pointer also. So generally, this is the thing how the forward pointer is traversed. This is the concept of input buffering.